I'm very worried about Lisa. She is only 13, and right now I don't know where she spends her time at night. I believe she has no source of income. I don't know where she's taking shelter. I don't know what she's eating. I don't know if she has any money. And I'm quite concerned about the people that she might be associating with. There he is. Denim, denim jacket. The Sydney Morning Herald type bag, the recycling bag with stuff hanging out of it. That's definitely the bloke that I saw. Whether or not that's Bill, but he, a six foot male dressed in denim, that'll be our fella. It's really hard. I try to hide it from my kids, but it. <laughs> I try not to upset them, but it, it's hard. If today's muster is any indication, it's going to be flat out this week for officers of the Missing Persons Unit. Leah, you have a 13-year-old female reported to Lismore Police. Constable Leah Wilson gets the case of missing schoolgirl Lisa Peters. Her mum moved to Darwin, but Lisa didn't want to leave her mates in Lismore. So she moved in with her aunt and uncle. A day later, the 13-year-old vanished. Uh, no one has seen her since, and her aunt and uncle are really worried about her. Thank you. Thank and you for see. Sergeant Mark Samways, there's finally a breakthrough in his long-term search for Bill Roach, missing for 13 years. How'd you go the other day in Melbourne? Since um, the case of Bill Roach was featured in the first uh, series of the TV show, we've received some information um, through Crime Stoppers. But before Mark begins his new search, blood samples taken from Bill's farmhouse months ago must first be matched against his mum's DNA. If it indicates that it is Bill Roach's blood, there's a, there's a good um, possibility that he has met with foul play. But if it's not his blood, it'll add weight to the new reports that Bill was spotted alive just days ago. We'll do our best and we won't give up until we resolve it one way or the other. In the case of missing schoolgirl Lisa Peters... I have been liaising with Lismore Police and I just... Constable Leah Wilson uh, is calling Lisa's uncle Andrew, who out, saw his runaway out, niece outside a house in Lismore only three days ago. And how did she seem to you when you spoke to her? She was, she was pretty quiet, but she was talking to us. Because she didn't want to move to Darwin with her family, Lisa's parents agreed she could stay with her uncle. But after just one day, she took off. Is, is there anything that may have happened? Were her relations with the family quite good or...? Yeah, everything's good. I think the main thing is she likes taking off and hanging with her little friend and just getting into trouble, stealing stuff, taking drugs and everything like that. Okay. That's the main, main reason why she keeps running off. Lisa's yeah, only 13, of, a runaway yeah. and already mixing okay, in the drug scene. Bye -bye. I'm going to go and uh, see... Um, Lisa's auntie tonight, get some more details and take it from there. It's going to be a matter of knocking on some doors and trying to locate who her friends are. On the other side of the office, Mark Samways is busy investigating a fresh lead in the case of missing Armadale man, Bill Roach. Just when you think you're going down one path, there's a twist and a turn. And to be honest, at the moment, I really don't have a feeling what's happened to Bill Roach. In the last series, we covered the case of Bill Roach, who disappeared from country New South Wales in 1993. It's 11, 12 years now, and it's... It just never gets any easier, let me tell you. One last search of Bill's farm by police revealed bloodstains in his house. This was their best chance to work out what happened to him until Mark Samways received more bad news. We realised that Billy Roach is actually an adopted son of Yvonne. So before he could test the blood found at Bill's farm, Mark first had to find Bill's biological mum. Hello, Margaret. Sergeant Mark Samways from the Police Missing Persons Unit. How are you? Margaret Weeks, Bill's birth mum, had no idea why she'd been called to police headquarters. You had a child in 1968? Yes, Gave yes. Gave birth to a male child? Yes. That young man was reported missing as a missing person. No, you're right. I have as much time as you need, OK? Margaret agreed to provide a DNA sample. 
but she also asked to meet Bill's adoptive mum. Thank you, Thank you. Well, I'll do the rest of this together between the two families. OK. And follow it through. Definitely. Now, police will use DNA to bring an end to 13 years of searching and perhaps closure for Bill's two mums. I'm taking the ambulance down to Melbourne, to the Victorian Institute of Forensic Medicine, where they'll test those samples and hopefully um, see if it's Bill's blood contained on those samples. Thank you. Back in the case of missing schoolgirl Lisa Peters, Leah has arrived in Lismore in northern New South Wales to continue her investigation. I'm very worried about Lisa. She is only 13, and right now I don't know where she spends her time at night. I believe she has no source of income. I don't know where she's taking shelter. I don't know what she's eating. I don't know if she has any money. And I'm quite concerned about the people that she might be associating with, given her age. Before she ran off, Lisa was living with her uncle Andrew and his partner, Alison. It was just the friends she didn't want to leave. Yeah. yeah. She just kept on taking off and wanting to be with her friends up, up mm. in Ganilabar and her boyfriend. Now, you've spoken with her mum? Yeah. Yep. She rings and every night father, worrying yeah. about her. Mm. And how's she feeling at the moment? Oh, she's very worried. She doesn't know what to do because no. the kid's that stubborn. She just won't stay anywhere. Is the idea or the hope that if we locate Lisa, yeah. that she then go to Darwin and be with her mum and her dad? Um, if that's possible, yeah. Is, is that they, what the, they haven't got a house of their own at the yeah, moment. Yeah, they're trying to get a house. Yeah, they've only just moved up there and they're trying to get their own place in that first. It's a worrying time, especially for Alison, who knows what it's like to live on the streets. I took off when I was 16 and didn't go back home and stuff. So, sort of know where she's kind of at. Yeah, kind of. So, didn't have anyone, like, Right, sweetie. Don't get upset. We didn't have many people to help me, sort of thing. So I was kind of just wanting to help her a bit, and give her a bit of guidance and stuff. She's trying to do the right thing by her, sweetie. Yeah. Yeah. She just doesn't want our help. Doesn't want anyone's help by the yeah. seams of it. Yeah. Just stubborn. Yeah. Like all young people. Stubborn, very stubborn. <coughs> 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 Mark Samways has arrived in Melbourne, carrying the bag that contains crucial blood samples that may confirm if Bill Roach is dead or alive. It's been a very long wait for uh, Bill's two mums, Yvonne and Margaret, and um, I'm as keen as anyone to get some results to them. If it is Bill's blood, it'll bring an end to the case and closure for Bill's grieving family. Hi, Mark. Hey, Mark. This is the reference sample that we obtained from the biological mum of the missing person. So if you can compare it to what we've got there. Yes, yes, OK. April Smith will now match the samples taken from Bill's farmhouse with the DNA swab provided by his mum. There are three possible outcomes. One, that the analysis will identify the blood samples as that of William Roach. The other thing it may do is um, exclude William Roach. Uh, Third outcome is that the samples pieces. won't be able to be analysed because of degradation and other reasons, and that's really the worst outcome for us, and we don't want to see that happen. But there's no guarantee the test will be conclusive. If the samples are not Bill's blood, it means it may have actually been him who was seen walking down a street in Brisbane just days ago. Back in Lismore, Local police have just acted on a tip-off that's led them to repeat runaway Lisa Peters. I'm Leah from the Missing Persons Unit. How are you going? Good. I'm Nigel. From Sydney. Hello, Lisa. How are you going? I'm Leah from the Missing Persons Unit in Sydney. We've been worried about you. Huh? Oh, a bit quiet. Can you tell me what's happened this morning? Mate, got a job off the good sergeant to go out and find... Um, Lisa and went to an address in Ganella Bar and found it. Okay, then. Is that an address that's known to you? Yeah. 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 Okay. Are you happy to have a chat with me, Lisa? Hmm? Don't be scared, sweetheart. You're not in any trouble, okay? You're not in any trouble at all. Do you want to tell me what's been going on? No? 
What's up, Satan, sweetheart? Is there anyone that you want to talk to? Is there anyone we could call for you? No? It's one of those really difficult moments. Who have you been staying with, sweetheart? Leah is going to need all her skills to get through to young Lisa. Back at the missing persons unit, while he waits for the report on the blood tests, Mark receives news of another sighting of Bill Roach from Armadale detective Greg Lamy. Hello, Greg. I'm well, mate. Yourself? Oh, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, look, we've had a couple of uh, developments in the Roach Manor. Yeah, wonderful. What are they? Uh, we had a fella come in the other day. He just returned from a uh, address in Brisbane over the weekend. Uh, he tells me that he's he saw Bill. This time, an old university friend has spotted ago. Bill. So someone who actually like knows him well. No, oh, knows him very, very well. Excellent. He's telling me that uh, there's no doubt in his mind that uh, it was Bill Roach. I guess that coincides a bit with. Uh, uh, an anonymous Crime Stoppers report we got through the week before, uh, saying they'd also seen Bill Roach, or who they believed to be Bill, um, in the Wynnum area at Brisbane. Excellent. Uh, First, uh, the Crime Stoppers now, report, like, uh, and now a second sighting. Two sightings okay. in two Brisbane neighbourhoods. I, I certainly intend to uh, go out there and have a bit of a look around. Do you, want, do you want a hand from our unit? Absolutely. All right. Yeah. This lead in Brisbane is going to be checked out to the best of our ability because we really have to confirm whether Bill is perhaps living in Brisbane or not. Back in Lismore, 13-year-old Lisa finally tells Leah she ran away to be with her boyfriend, Donald. If my mum said that it's OK if I stay with Donald's mum, would I be at that? But you need to tell me why you want to stay at Donald's mum's. Why is that place so special? Donald's mum said if I stay there, that I can go to school. Yeah. And they're going to move to Newcastle so I can get away from all the stuff down there. Have you talked about this with your mum or your auntie or your uncle? No. You don't want to be in Lismore anymore because you're fighting with your, your all your old friends, is that right? All the kids I went to the school, they don't like me anymore. When, they, when you say they don't like you, what do they do? They write stuff about me. Where do they write stuff about you? Up at Coles and the other ones and over at the soccer club. On the walls and graffiti and things? Yeah. OK. So that's why you don't want to live in Lismore anymore. So, armed with a little more information, Leah and Senior Constable Peter Ellis go to the Department of Community Services, who'll decide where 13-year-old Lisa should live. She started to open up a little bit. So hopefully now when we go down to docks, we can make some kind of other plans or arrangements for her. In Melbourne, at the Victorian Institute of Forensic Medicine, DNA specialist April Smith is examining samples taken from Bill Roach's farmhouse. Well, what appear to be blood stains on the timber flooring may or may not be blood. They're brown staining on, on the floorboards and we're just going to test that to see if we can get uh, a result, a, a human DNA result. And just a short time later, April gets a result that's not what anyone expects. I'm sure Mark Samways isn't going to be too happy, but I'm, I'll give him a call and let him know the result. In outback Queensland, in the ongoing case of Paul Laba, it's 5am and very hot. The temperature already in the 30s. Jim Ryan and Tony McDowell are about to lead a team into the desert to search an area where Paul's tracks were last seen. Last week, Detective Sergeant Jim Ryan from Queensland's Missing Persons Unit flew 1,500 kilometres into the outback to start a new search for 76-year-old opal miner Paul Laba. Searches were conducted. They were conducted on trail bike, horseback and on foot. Uh, but uh, nothing was located. A year ago, case officer Sergeant Tony McDowell from Winton Police 
found Paul's ute broken down here on this bush track. 14 kilometres away, Tony found the ute's radiator hanging in a tree. Where the radiator was found is off in this direction, okay. probably about 14, 15 k's. It's now just after sunrise, and the SES volunteers are moving into the desert to look for poor lava. In a few weeks, it'll be too hot to work out here. So this really is the last throw of the dice, their final chance to find out what happened to the missing opal miner. Missing Persons Unit, Mark Samways. Hi, Mark. It's April here. Back at Sydney's uh, Missing Persons Unit, unit Mark Samways gets the call he's been um, waiting just for. Just calling you about the William Roach case. From the mitochondrial DNA testing. The uh, two pieces of timber flooring, the swab from the concrete and the swab from the carpet underlay. If the um, test reveals it's Bill's blood, then it will confirm involved. police suspicion um, that Bill has been murdered. Well, unfortunately, we were not able to get a result from any of the items. So there's nothing there to indicate that it could be our man's blood? Uh, unfortunately, there's, there's not, no. Takes us back to square one in relation to the possible homicide inquiry, but in some regards it's good because there's still hope that Bill may be walking around somewhere. And that hope lies here in Brisbane's Fortitude Valley, where it was reported Bill was last seen. With dozens of surveillance cameras in the area, if Bill was here, he's sure to have been recorded. Meanwhile, back in Lismore... We've left Lisa at the police station and we're going to try and sort out some kind of plan or resolution um, because hopefully we don't want Lisa to continue running away. With Lisa's mum in Darwin and because she says she doesn't want to live in Lismore, her future will be decided by the Department of Community Services. Lisa's expressed the desire yeah. to, to get away from Lismore, yeah. which is a good yeah. step. Oh, she she good. states yeah. she wants to go to school. Yeah, I keep saying so, it's not good down here for her. Yeah, no, that's all right. Yeah. I'll fly to Sydney with her, all right, and then okay. she'll fly to Bathurst from there. Yeah. So for police, their next step is to clear the move with Lisa's nana, Mari, who everyone hopes will get the teenager back on track. OK, yeah. at this point, we just want to get her somewhere where she's happy and she's safe and then they can revisit the idea at a later stage of them moving to Darwin when the parents have found their house. Can you hear me over there? Far end? All right, just start moving forward slowly. In outback Queensland, the team of volunteers has begun its search for missing opal miner Paul Lava. <laughs> the volunteers picked their way through the gullies near where police found Paul's radiator from his broken down car. We're looking for anything that doesn't fit into the natural habitat surroundings. The temperature is now nudging 48 and only getting hotter. As they focus on every metre of terrain looking for clues, the heat begins to take its toll falling a fair bit behind over on the right-hand side there. All right. Finally, after four hours and ten kilometres of hard slog, the volunteers have covered the entire search area. But they've found nothing. Meanwhile, back at Lismore Police Station... Hello. Mari, how are you going? Peter Ellis from Lismore Case Police. officer Peter Ellis is still trying to find a home for 13-year-old Lisa Peters with her nan, Mari, in Bathurst. Mate, um, we found her up here in Lismore, and we just need to know if you'd, you'd take her in down there at Bathurst this afternoon. If she behaves herself, if she runs away on me, she's gone, OK? Yeah, no, that's fair enough, mate. We've had a bit of a yarn to her, and we've um, sort of knocked that on the head. Um, we've been down and spoken to Docs, and we're going to organise some flights for her to... Um, turn up at Bathurst there at about five to eight this evening. Yep. Now okay. Peter has one last job, to tell Lisa she's off to Bathurst. She'll be fine. This is the way you approach things. It's the only way she can possibly go and make a good go of it, rather than sort of being on the street and just, yeah, living rough, so to speak. In the Queensland outback, 
mystery of Paul Laba's disappearance just took another twist. Yeah, out near Paul Laba's camp. Just when they thought the search was over, the desert reveals another secret. Where exactly did, have, did you find these, Shane? Yeah, no, that'll be fine now. Bring them a in road there. crew has found a case for a pair of glasses right where Paul went missing. Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks, Shane. Uh, I'm going to go out and have a look at the scene, have a look at the, the glasses case where we found them. It's in an area about half a k from the entrance to Paul Laba's camp. It's uh, in an area that we haven't previously searched. So we'll go see what we uh, see what he has found and see whether it's worthwhile us uh, doing a further search of that area. In Lismore, it's time to tell Lisa Peters that she's going to be living with her nan, Mari. Mate, um, as you know, we've been down to the docks office, spoken to docks. Um, mate, we've organised for you to go down to your grandmother's place down in Bathurst. And then you can get back into school and stuff like that down there, OK? Now, what happens is you're going to go um, fly down to Sydney probably about 3 o'clock with the, the good constable here, and then you'll be wait with her until you get a connecting flight down to Bathurst where Mari and um, the rest of the family's going to meet you down there, OK? I don't want to leave yet. Sorry, darling? I don't want to leave yet. Lisa, unfortunately, you can't keep running away, and we're really worried about you. You said you hadn't been eating properly. All right, you don't have any of your things, and you're 13, duh. You said you wanted to go to school. You said you didn't want to be in Lismore anymore because it was too hard for you. And we're trying to give you all those things. Staying here, you're not going to get that and we want to get you back in school where there's people that don't pick on Lee you. Lee has been in this situation so many times before, remaining yeah, sympathetic while explaining a tough decision yeah. that's in Lisa's best interests is that's never I'm easy. I've just told Lisa that she's going to be going to Bathurst to the grandparents. Now she's changed her mind from this morning, stating that she wanted to leave Lismore and stating that she wants to stay here. However, I can't allow, we can't allow Lisa to live with her friends. Um, she's obviously going to continue to run away from Andrew and Alison. She may only be 13, but if Lisa doesn't want to stay in Bathurst, she'll only run off again. So Leah still has a lot of work to do. But will Lisa listen? At police headquarters in Brisbane, Mark has met up with Greg Lamy, the Armadale detective who's been looking for Bill Roach for 13 years. They're here to meet with Jim Ryan. He's just returned from looking for Paul Laba in outback Queensland to help Mark and Greg with their search for Bill. These three men have been looking for Bill Roach for over a decade, and they've never had leads as positive as these sightings. In outback Queensland, Tony and the team have now reached the spot where Paul Laba's spectacle case was found. Uh, it's got Paul's name uh, engraved in the back here. It's definitely his glasses case. All these creek lines here flow down to where the glasses case were found. So we'll just see if there's any other evidence that may be laying around half buried but it won't be easy, because this is channel country and rains may have washed away any clues. All right, well, we've covered that whole area, which flows down to this gully here, which pretty much covers everything that we can do for that side of things. Um, didn't find anything, but we'll, at least we've eliminated this area as a part of our inquiries. After yet another search, Tony and his team are tired and frustrated and still no closer to working out what happened. In my uh, report to the coroner, I'll be recommending my belief that Paul has passed away out here somewhere. But um, he's a fairly tough old bugger. He's lived out here for a long time. So you just really don't know. He could be out there somewhere. Back at the Queensland Missing Persons Unit, 
Getting a look at any surveillance footage that may locate Bill in Brisbane is their next crucial step. We've been on to the CCTV people. They need a police officer to sit with them and go through the footage and identify who the person is. I suppose the most important thing for us is this this guy knew him in, intimately. Mm. And so it's not like someone out of the blue that's seen Bill's photo on TV. So this guy actually associated with him at the time he went missing. So for him to be adamant that it was Bill, there's got to be some credence to it. So they're anxious to meet their eyewitness, yeah, Bill's exactly old it. friend, That's Bly Grant. I think if we go down to the valley first, we can meet with uh, Bly and uh, have a look at the tape. If Bly has seen his mate Bill, there's every chance he's been captured by one of the dozens of surveillance cameras in the area. This is probably the first um, possible evidence of life we've had for, what, 12, 13 years. Uh, Sergeant Samways is still up in Brisbane chasing down the Crime Stoppers report we have of Bill Roach. Um, we got that after the program went to air. Bill Roach was last seen in 1993 in Armidale. Police believed he was dead, but after a reported sighting by a friend and multiple Crime Stopper reports that Bill was alive, Mark Samways is in Queensland to investigate. And there's a pretty good chance that this person may have been caught on CCTV, so fingers crossed. Some of us are on the road today. Leah's up in Lismore. They found Lisa and she's now going to live with a grandmother in Bathurst. 13-year-old Lisa Peters was found on the streets of Lismore where she'd been living without food or money for over a week. Worried about the young schoolgirl, police brokered a deal for her to live with her grandmother in Bathurst. Leah's escorting her to Sydney today and that's off to Nan, so hopefully it'll work out for her. Okay. I've got a new lead in one of my long-term missing persons cases from 2002 and it appears to be positive. Sergeant Vanessa Rolfe gets a break in her long-term case of a 30-year-old Victorian man reported missing five years ago. Police believe human remains found in a paddock in western New South Wales may be his. It's early days, but the detectives are hopeful it is their missing mail. So, have a good day. Meanwhile, in Brisbane, in the ongoing search for Bill Roach, case officers Greg Lamy and Mark Samways have arrived to meet with missing persons detective Jim Ryan. They're following up on the unconfirmed sightings of Bill. We continued the search for Bill Roach, who was last seen in 1993. Police came to the conclusion that Bill had been murdered. But before closing the case, the police launched one final search of his old farm. Investigators took samples of blood from Bill's farmhouse, but a forensic lab in Melbourne delivered a surprising result. Well, unfortunately, we were not able to get a result from any of the items. It kind of leaves us back to square one with the investigation, but it also leaves hope that Bill's still alive somewhere. Uh, Bill Roach that hope grew after an old the university idea. mate of Bill's he says he actually him. saw him walking down a street in Brisbane. I suppose the most important thing for us is this, this guy knew him intimately. Mm. And so it's not like someone out of the blue that's seen Bill's photo on TV. So this guy actually associated with him at the time he went missing. So for him to be adamant that it was okay. Bill, there's well, got to be some credence to it. You know, we'll be seeking to get a good shot of the person who he saw so we can sort of follow up from then. If it is Bill Roach, police think there's every chance he's been recorded by one of dozens of security cameras in the area. Probably the first um, possible evidence of life we've had for, what, 12, 13 years. Back at Sydney's missing persons unit, they've begun working a new case to identify remains of a skeleton found on a New South Wales yeah. farm. Uh, g'day, sir. Graham Hook from the missing persons unit. Ringing about the unidentified um, skull that you found out there. Graham's yeah. hoping Inspector Mick Willing in Dubbo can give him more information about this grim find. But yesterday morning, around quarter to six, a a farmer came across um, what appeared to be a human skull whilst he was mustering cattle. He contacted uh, rural crime investigators who went down with detectives and basically cordoned the scene off and SDS gave us a hand doing a bob search of the entire area. Police believe the remains belonged to this man, Stuart, 
who was reported missing by his family in Victoria five years ago. I read in the orig original event that Stuart went missing from near the railway station at Stuart Town. Yeah. He disappeared on his way to Queensland after stopping in this small country town. He was seen wandering near the train tracks. And where the skull was found is probably around 500 metres from the railway line. And that's where police are concentrating their search for evidence. The remains will be taken to the Institute of Forensic Medicine at Glebe, where they'll be subjected to further examination and um, using DNA and dental records, hopefully identified. In Brisbane's Fortitude Valley, police are meeting the man who says he's seen Bill Roach. He's Bly Grant, Bill's old uni mate. Good to see you, Greg. Positive he saw Bill walking here only days ago, Bly called police immediately. Uh, basically just retrace the steps from when you first saw the person. Yeah. Bill. You knew Bill really well? Yeah, really well. We kicked around uni um, for five or six years. I worked so in cafes, played pool against him, so drank with him. You'd recognise his gait and his, Absolutely. his mannerisms, Absolutely. not just his facial features. No, and that's why I followed him. Not wanting to scare Bill off, he kept his distance. Yeah, just shopping bag, head down, looked like he was going home. Right. We'll just get you to retrace your steps, I suppose. Yeah. It's a strong lead. Police thought Bill had been murdered, but Bly swears he saw his mate alive. So anywhere closer than 10 metres away. In Brisbane's Fortitude Valley, the eyewitness in the Bill Roach case says he saw Bill right here just days ago. Um, might have been this intersection or the next one, but at one of the two he stopped and looked um, that way, down the hill basically. The camera, the camera there. All right, that's good. All right, so he crossed here, didn't he? Yeah. Bly says he followed him for four blocks. And fortunately, the whole route is covered with surveillance cameras. That's at least three cameras we've got, hopefully got footage of. If Bill has been caught on camera, it'll confirm Bly's story that he's alive and possibly hiding out somewhere in Brisbane. Our witness is adamant that it was Bill Roach and we have to confirm that and see if it is Bill Roach and we won't stop until we do that. All right, we'll go to the city and have a look at the CCTV. Okay, let's go. All right, okay. The investigation into the unidentified remains found in country New South Wales now ramps up. Yeah, uh, Chris? Yes. Yeah, Graham Hook from the Missing Persons Unit. Sergeant Hook Good. is contacting forensic dentist Chris Griffiths, whose specialty is identifying remains. It's um, a skull with the top jawbone intact. The lower jawbone isn't there, but the top jawbone does have some dental work done to it. Oh, that's great. Oh, that should, well, that at least puts it back into the we know it's a fairly modern skull and not a, you know, ancient Aboriginal or something Dr. Like that. Griffiths will compare teeth from the skull with Stuart's dental records. And detectives from Dubbo have driven the five hours to Sydney. They carry with them the remains they think belong to their missing person so Dr. Griffiths can examine them. Stuart was located like walking down the railway tracks of Stuart Town, which here is mainly a freight line track, uh, naked police at the time formed the opinion that he may be suffering from some sort of mental health issue. As a result, he was taken to hospital where he was assessed by a doctor there uh, and uh, subsequently released back into the police custody, allegedly not uh, suffering any mental issues, where he was returned to his vehicle and uh, released. He was not seen again since that time. At Brisbane City Police Station, Mark and Greg are searching those surveillance cameras for the first sign of Bill Roach in 13 years. They begin to scan every frame. So it's 11 o'clock now. So he walks up. Yeah, walks. Look at this. Then they spot the witness, Bly. That's Bly, they're about to pass that sign. Yeah, yeah OK. But the question is, is that Bill Roach walking in front of him? Well, it's got him. It's got the back of him. Um, 
in the distance, but it's not, not very clear, is it? No. It's definitely the guy the fly was following. But... The camera angle is wrong, the image is blurred, and police are not sure. There must be, there must be other, other cameras up and down that strip. So now, if they can find the right camera, there's every chance they'll get a better shot of the man they think is Bill. At Sydney's police headquarters, in the case of the skeleton remains, Dubbo detectives are carrying the evidence they hope will solve their missing persons case. Nick Kesseris and Luke Scott will take the remains to Glebe Morgue, where up to 20 skeletons are identified by their teeth every year. On Thursday, we obviously located the, uh, the skull yep. after the farmer located it in the paddock. Yep. Uh, as a result of that, we organised the SES and there was a line search was done. As a result, we found numerous other human bones. Some of them, we believe, may be animal. Uh, we just need to get uh, that clarified, obviously, when we get to Glebe. Um, other than that, um, we've just seized them and brought them down for today. Uh, we've got seen the coroner. She's been notified at Wellington uh, and she's obviously issued an order for a post-mortem. But it'll be another 24 hours before Stuart's dental records arrive. If we can identify him on dental, it'll be coming down straight away as soon as the records are here. Yep. The only problem is with that, there's going to be... He's only got one filling. Constable Leah Wilson from the New South Wales Missing Persons Unit is escorting Lisa to her grandmother's home in Bathurst. Leah flew to Lismore in country New South Wales to look for Lisa. I don't know where she's taking shelter. I don't know what she's eating. I don't know if she has any money. And I'm quite concerned about the people that she might be associating with. Lisa ran away from her uncle's home after just one day. It's just stubborn. Yeah. I've got young people. Then, after a two-week search, local going? police found her in Lismore. Hello, Lisa. How are you going? Don't be scared, sweetheart. You're not in any trouble, OK? You're not in any trouble at all. Do you want to tell me what's been going on? No? After right, hours of counselling, authorities decided that Lisa happen. should leave Lismore and live with her grandmother in Bathurst. No, we'll leave yet. Lisa, unfortunately, you can't keep running away and we're really worried about you and we want to get you back in school where there's people that don't pick on you. So today, at Sydney Airport, Lisa is finally a little happier. Most of the time I've been looking for my boyfriend because he went missing as well. He ran away from his mum. The last one was the first trip, so... My nan said that he's allowed to move in with us. But I can't find him, so... OK, it's gate 47. I think it's a great result, actually, and the best part of it is Lisa's actually now talking to me and smiling, and so it's been a good day. <laughs> So Leah grabs the chance to give Lisa some good old-fashioned advice. I told you you shouldn't fight over boys. Should you? You shouldn't fight over boys. Flight 526 departs. See you, Lisa. I'll give you a call on Friday, OK? See you, sweetheart. As Lisa boards the flight, Leah can only hope that her grandmother will turn her young life around. Obviously, there's a lot of children in the same position as Lisa, um, but it does make me feel really happy and it makes us all feel good when we can reunite them with family and that they do show some kind of in, um, indication and there's an undertaking that they want to make things different. And when we give them that slight opportunity, it's all up to Lisa now. It's case closed for now, but just how long will Lisa stay in Bathurst? Back in Brisbane's Fortitude Valley, Mark and Greg have stepped up their hunt for video evidence that may confirm Bill Roach is still alive. We now have a definitive time and a definitive date when that male person walked up that mall. So now we can approach, approach the owners of those establishments and say, do you have footage? They may now have a date, but the worry is there's a chance the pictures may already have been wiped. You've got a camera pointing out into the mall, yeah. closed circuit TV. How long do you keep footage for? Oh, 28 days. 
We've got a long-term missing person. The guy's been missing for 13 years. Okay, we yeah. believe he walked up the mall. Any chance we could have a look? Yeah, I'll bring you this. It may be high-tech evidence, but it's old-style policing. Hard slogged, dingy corridors, and plenty of unanswered questions. Yeah. All right, that's yeah. a good one. Yeah, that one. All right. Number yeah, 10. Right. There's a camera on the roof of the hotel that points directly into the mall where we believe this person would have walked at this at the time that we looked at the council footage. 11 a.m. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I'll probably try 10, 59. Yeah. Depends how accurate yeah. your camera is. Should be dressed in denim and carrying they a... They painstakingly a scan every right frame. Is that, the bottom? is that the bottom of the hill and this is the top of the hill? But the camera moves again before Bly, or the man he thinks is Bill Roach, come into view. Like, what, what time is it showing now? Yeah. It's such frustrating work, but with so many cameras, there has to be one that's looking in the right direction at 11 a.m. We're now in Bathurst, in country New South Wales. Teenage runaway Lisa Peters is finally home. Settling in with sister Jackie and her grandmother, Mari. Jackie is so relieved to see her sister, she even bought her a kitten. Nanny cried for a while and I was worried about you being hurt and all, you know, you, you don't know how much upset you, Nan, because I love you so much, you know that. Silly girl. <laughs> when Nan cried, it would make me cry. <laughs> and I'd sleep with Nan every night because she'd cry herself to sleep. Has she missed her that much? At least until her mum in Darwin finds a home, Lisa will stay here with her gran and her new pet and older sister. <laughs> well, um, I'm trying to convince her to go back to school. She's going to have to do year seven again because she only went for a few weeks. I'm going to get a job on the weekends and I'm going to see if she wants to get a job with me on the weekends. So I'm gonna see what she wants to do. Whenever anyone mentioned your name, I'd start crying because I missed you. I miss you too. No, I won't run away again. Yeah, I'm starting to cry now. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in Brisbane, what about this one? That's a... after 10 yeah. hours on the trail, Mark and Greg are still searching Fortitude Valley's Brunswick Mall, looking for the right camera pointing the right way. Your TV there. Does it shine very much out on the street or not? We just need to look. It doesn't shine much in the street, does it? No. no. All right, no worries, thank you. No, it gets down to here. No, yeah, it only sees the legs, there's no pump. Still no luck. Run out of options. Then, on the very last block, Greg spots yeah. one more camera. Does, does, does that, that capture out onto the footpath? No. We're looking for someone who walked past here. Nothing okay, to do with what happened. Without a clear image of Bly or the man he thinks is Bill, they're back to square one. Well, if he's walked past there, it's going to pick him up, isn't it? Because that's like just excellent vision. Let's see, that. see here also. And just a few frames later, Mark and Greg see the images they've been hoping for. Hey, there he is. Denim, denim jacket. The Sydney Morning Herald type bag, the recycling bag with stuff hanging out of it. That's definitely the bloke that I saw. Whether or not that's Bill, but he, the six foot male dressed in denim, that'll be our fella. And there's his mate, Bly, following close behind. Bly, that's our witness. So that's that guy in the denim's definitely the one he thinks is Bill. So he's still following him. So he's still convinced there. Yeah. And he's ringing someone to tell him that he, he spotted who he thinks is Bill Roach. That's excellent. Yeah, that's a good result. That is, that's good. At last. Yeah, it's taken lots of time. It's taken all day. It's yeah. actually that's been good. 13 years. But if this is Bill Roach, it's all been worth it. Bill Roach may be alive. Perhaps Bill is walking around Brisbane somewhere. In Queensland, it's day two in the search for Bill Roach. Detective Jim Ryan has taken Mark and Greg to a pub in Wynnum, where Crime Stoppers reports have also placed Bill. One of the premises he's supposed to hang is here on Friday okay. nights. Rod's right pushy. Yeah, yeah. He may have a beard now. Uh, the, his name, well, his name's Bill, Bill Roach or William Roach, but yep. he could be using any name now. But um, 
Hey, by any chance, does that face look familiar at all? Friday nights plays the pokies, supposedly. And mind you, that photo's 13 years old. To confirm the reports, Mark and Greg need someone to recognise Bill's photo. Does anyone like that look familiar? No. And after canvassing everyone in the bar... I think I have seen him in here. Whereabouts? In the public bar. They no. finally get a positive ID. Yeah, I've seen him just over there having a drink. It could just be the break they're looking for. And then a check of the bar's register shows there's actually two members on file called Roach. Uh, so your membership records only have addresses and names, no date of birth or...? No, we don't ask for date of birth. Calls to Crime Stoppers have also placed him here at the Wynnum RSL. Yeah. Hey, sorry. Question, um, but this man's not deaf, is he? Because there well, is a person who, if he does, who could look a little bit like that. He rides around on a motorcycle, on a motorised bike. I've seen him in Wynnum because I live in Wynnum myself. It's the second mention of the man on the bike who looks like Bill Roach, except that this man wears a hearing aid. Well, who knows what's happened in that 13 years? He could have had an accident, something could have happened to him. Um, yeah, I wouldn't discount it because of that, especially seeing the age seems to fit. They said in mid-30s. So their canvas is working, but is the man on the push bike Bill Roach? Back in Melbourne, the case of missing mum Veronica Green is still very active. Who could forget both her daughter's heartbreaking 30-year search? But now there's been yet another development in the case. While looking for their mum, they found a brother they'd never seen. Stephen was adopted out at birth and never knew his biological family. <laughs> All right, go on. At a family reunion, he also met his dad for the first time. They just stared at me for a long time. I asked him about our mother. He told me she was beautiful. He told me he's really um, passionate and sorry that she's not around. I haven't really got to what went on about me, if that makes any sense with him, you know. I told him there was plenty of time for that. But unfortunately, time ran out for his father and Stephen. A month later, Dad passed away, so it was fantastic that he was able to meet his son. He said, oh, I'm really, pr really proud of him, my son. How's, you know, my son? So, you know, and I think, I think that's the thing is it was the connection to, to Mum, just like us. Yeah, that was the only thing that was not complete for Dad, was uh, him having not ever seen Mum again. And uh, I think he probably had a lot to say to her, you know. Mm. I really think that he was so regretful of the whole situation. and He never got over her. Mm. Nothing to fear now, Mum. Not that there was. Probably the only thing he would have said to you was sorry. With Dad dying, there's closure, you know. But with Mum, there's just no closure. You never get over that. You never stop looking and you never stop waiting and you never stop wondering if you're ever going to see her again. I can't express um, how, how complete you would make things for me and, and Penny. And we just really would love to spend Christmas 2007 with you. Please come home. Back in Queensland, after a long day searching for Bill last, Roach, our last real chance. Police have reached the end of the trail in Wynnum. Any chance you could just run this guy's name through your records, please? What was it? Roach. R O A C H. R O A C H. There's no member called Roach. But staff here also remember the man who looks like Bill and who rides a bike. This is the third licensed premises and the one we were at before we came here, they, they described that fellow that you were talking about with the hearing aids. And a search of the club's me. register gives them a name and another address. Oh, well, we'll go over the address and have a talk to him. All right. But just as they're about to leave, there's a sudden development. The man on the bike shows up. 13 years of searching comes down to this next moment. 
uh, we've got a 14 year old uh, boy missing from Alexandria that's been reported to Lycadelais Sir Glebe. Senior Constable Andy Drummond is assigned the worrying case of missing schoolboy Mitchell McLean. The champion gymnast took off 14 days ago and his mum hasn't heard from him since. Yeah, this 14-year-old uh, suffers from ODH too and he's off his meds at the moment. Her mum's fairly concerned about him. The uh, detectives have been down from Dubbo about the uh, Stewart Town remains and uh, Graham's at the morgue at the moment. Police believe the unidentified remains found on a New South Wales farm belong to a Victorian man called Stuart who disappeared back in 2002. Rather hoping they'll get a result because this has been five years with the family. Mark's called, um, some been some good news. Crime Stoppers reports of uh, Bill Roach sightings are firming up. Bill Roach went missing 13 years ago and police thought he'd been murdered. But a recent sighting by a friend and multiple calls to Crime Stoppers suggest he's alive and well in Brisbane. So uh, let's get to it. Have a good day. We've got lots of work to do. Thanks, Thanks Ross. Ross. Hello, Ross. Hello, Ross. Back in Sydney... Yeah, good day, uh, Anita. It's Senior Constable Andy Drummond, missing persons at Parramatta. How are you going? Oh, good, thanks. How are you? Andy's oh, calling thanks. Glebe Police, chasing an uh, update on the case of missing 14-year-old gymnast yeah, Mitchell yeah. McLean. Just a little bit concerned about him. Um, I've just noticed he's got um, ADHD. He's, he's also on medication and um, hasn't taken it for a while, so um, I know that when he doesn't take it, he gets a bit violent. Yeah, I'm aware of that. I'll After 14 was, days without medicine yeah. and no yeah. family yeah. contact, Police fear the worst. Um, I think there's some um, intel on our system for, for some places in Leichhardt, so uh, we might start checking those out today and see how we go. Okay, okay. Bye bye. All right, bye. There's two concerns really. Um... Young age, he's only 14 years old, and also he's um, ADHD sufferer, so we don't want to see him get in any type of trouble at a young age, so yeah. Back in Queensland, the long term case of missing Armadale man Bill Roach is hotting up. That Brian could well be that, the subject of that crime stop, because uh, someone's rung up genuinely believing that this fella's our fella. Sergeant Mark Samways arrived in Brisbane to follow up on sightings of Bill Roach. This guy knew him in intimately. An old university mate, Bly Grant, says he saw Bill only days before. He might have even got to the corner, but that's when I decided to follow him. Multiple Crime Stoppers reports also place Bill in the same area. It might have been this intersection or the next one. And there's a good chance he's been caught on surveillance cameras. It's definitely the one he thinks of Bill. Then, after a day of searching the local bars... I've seen him in Wynnum because I live in Wynnum myself. The bloke on the bike, who's supposed to be Bill Roach, shows up. You Brian? Brian? Yeah. Here, g'day. Mark. Please, how are you? We're from Sydney. We're looking for a missing person yeah. who went missing 13 years ago. It's not you? No. Someone, someone telephoned us mm -hmm. and said that this man rides a bike like you. Can That's you see, not me. No, no, but can you see But there's how no like mistaking the similarity. The and, yeah. and this explains the high number of calls to crime stoppers. Okay. All right, no worries. All right, good Thank, you. You. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, mate. Bye-bye. Thank you, Brian. If you didn't know better, you would say yeah. that, that, that is, like that is Brian. Brian. Yeah, yeah look, as, as you say, 12, 13 yeah. years ago. Yeah, and that's definitely. the problem. The calls one. were based on 13-year-old well, photographs of Bill Roach. Back in Sydney, in the case of 14-year-old runaway Mitchell McLean... It's been around 11.30 since last Thursday. After being briefed by longer, Andy at the so missing persons I'm unit, his mum, Anne, hits the phones. And get as much information off them as possible and then probably go looking for him. But with no news, it's all too much for Anne and she takes to the streets herself. Well, I've put up the flyers. I've contacted nearly everybody I know and got them and their friends out, like, just keeping an eye out for him. I've been into shopping centres to the security section and given them the photo and asked them, like, if they see him to ring the police. Mitchell McLean is a champion athlete, but without medication for his hyperactivity, he gets carried away and often gets into trouble. We go 
who are driving around the streets looking for him and we've been putting up posters to um, see if anyone sees him and we've written on the posters like if he sees the picture can he please bring home I don't care if he doesn't come home straight away but as long as he rings home I know he's all right it'll make me a lot a lot easier for me but not hearing anything at all it's tearing me apart after 14 days of silence, the stress is taking its toll on Anne and her family. Before is nothing compared to now. To start off with, it's anger, heaps of anger, like, why is he doing this and that? And then as the days go on, it's more worried and um, upsetting. And wondering what he's getting up to, whether he's getting into drugs or crime. And that sort of thing. It's really hard. I try to hide it from my kids, but it... <sighs> to try not to upset them, but it, it's hard. In Sydney, Anne McLean's missing poster drop is working. So they're fairly reliable uh, sightings, are they? After two long weeks, Mitchell's been spotted. Andy's asked local police to urgently follow up on the reports. So Constable Scott Curtin and Senior Constable Anita Masilo waste no time. We're on our way to an address in uh, White Street, Lilyfield. We've received information that he may be there, so we're just going to go around and check it out. Anita knows time is critical. She needs to investigate the leads before Mitchell leaves the area. He's 14 years of age. He's too young to be roaming around. But from our records, he's, he's been moving about in the last few days out in the street. But obviously, his welfare is a, is a high risk. Back at Brisbane's missing persons unit, Jim Ryan is talking with a photo ageing specialist. All right, and you need the uh, pet parent photos if we can, round about the same age, siblings, those sorts of things. All right. Okay. To assist with the ageing process, they would like photos of any siblings, like in their mid 30s, and also photos of Bill's parents at approximately 37 years of age. I know where his biological mum and dad are, um, and Bill's also got three or four male siblings. So we should be able to get all those photos that, that your fellow requires. As Mark Samways heads back to Sydney, he knows the aged photo is the last throw of the dice in this 13-year-old case. We just go, we'll go Meanwhile, on the hunt for 14-year-old runaway Mitchell McLean, Anita's been told he might be hiding out at a housing commission unit here in the inner city. Here, radio, just your information. We're going off at White Street, Lilyfield. An anonymous informant has revealed Mitchell has been hiding here with his best mate. If Anita's information is right, she'll find Mitchell McLean behind this closed door. At police headquarters in Brisbane, forensic artist John Garner has just received the pictures he'll use to create a current photo of Bill Roach. Now, first viewing of these, I'm looking for family traits. It's fairly obvious looking at these, there are certain characteristics within this family that will pass down through the various siblings. John now has faces, photos of Bill Roach's biological eyes. brothers uh, and uh, mother at the, the same eyes. age that Bill would um, be so today. In order to make this look like he's 39, I need to know what that family will do at 39. So once I've scanned the photos, I can then put it on the computer and basically work with the actual images. <laughs> He splits the faces like a plastic surgeon, then combines them to show how similar their structures are. I know, looking at them, that the family will age in that manner, 
um, and provide me with some very handy type um, um, skin lines, wrinkles. And there's that shape of the face again, the lines down here, the shape of the nose. Uh, the general overall layout of the face is very similar to the, uh, to the sun's. We know that the nose is very, very close, so I'm not going to modify that at all. The mouth is very close. I'll bring in the original missing person and make sure that this face is precisely the same as the face of the missing person. But one feature doesn't match, and it makes John's task much harder. The thing that doesn't really gel with the rest of the family is the, uh, the shape of the hair. He's now going to have probably a receding line, something like that, with this style of hairdo. But in this job, near enough is not good enough. John has to get it right, or it's all been a waste of time. Meanwhile, Anita's acting on a tip-off that 14-year-old Mitchell McLean's been staying here with his mate. Hello, ma'am. How are you? Good. My name's uh, Senior Constable Mozillo. I'm from Leichhardt Police. We've come here to inquire about a young boy that may be staying here at this location. No Mitchell? See. No, see. Me not understand. You don't understand? No. What? You don't? He's a boy. You don't understand. Who doesn't understand yourself? Do you know Mitchell? A young boy, 14. Mitchell McLean? No, 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 no. What about Peter? Peter's school today. OK. My grandson. Oh, Peter's your grandson? Yeah. Mrs well, Clapper's yeah. grandson, yeah. Peter, yeah. is one of Mitchell's so, best yeah, yeah. mates. Okay. Did Peter have a friend staying here? No, 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 no. No friend in my flat. No friend in your flat? No, 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 no. Okay. You go to school. OK, I will. Peter's explain. All right. No problem. Okay. If she does know anything, Mrs Clappers isn't saying much. But the anonymous caller was positive Mitchell's living here. We may have to speak to um, her grandson and see if he can, can provide us with any information. But then, on the way out, Anita spots a boy with a red jumper, just like the one Mitchell was last seen wearing. How come you're not at school today? I'm expelled. Do you know Mitchell McLean at all? Are you sure about that? Because he was wearing a, a red jumper. It's a bit of a coincidence. He's been sighted around this area. Do you know anywhere that he hangs? Do you know who his mates are? Can you give me anything? No, I know nothing. Honestly, he's not in any trouble. No, his mum just wants to know that he's yeah, OK. No, she's always spoken to me. Oh, you've spoken to his yeah. mum? So if you see him, can you get him to call his mum? Yeah. Although okay. he's spoken to so Mitchell's to mum, he reckons he doesn't right. even know Mitchell. And it's this teenage code of silence that makes finding these kids such a nightmare. Mitchell, if you see this, could you please ring home? Because we love you and we're really worried about you. And if anyone else sees him, could they please ring the police so that we could just know that he's OK? Back at the McLean household. Hi, it's Anne McLean, Mitchell's mum. Someone just tried to ring me. Yep, thank you. Anne's still making calls, this time to Mitchell's school, praying someone has seen him. Yeah, I've got the I've got a poster up at the bus depot. And so all the drivers should know today that if they see him to ring the police. And the call does bring encouraging Thank you. news. Fine. That was just Mitchell's principal at Green Square. Um, one of the boys that goes to school with him apparently can get in contact with someone who knows where Mitchell is this afternoon, but he said he's not meeting him till after school. Anne's frantic attempts to find her son are finally paying off. See if we can find anyone who knows anything. So, as school finishes, Anita and Scott head to the local park, where Mitchell's supposed to be meeting his friends. How old do you reckon that guy is on the bench? Too tall. Ah, uh, he's definitely too old, I would say. Red shirt or blue shirt? Red. There's a whole handful before. But once again, Mitchell has slipped away. Tiny little bit too late. Here at Sydney's Glebe Morgue, Dubbo detectives Nick Caceres and Luke Scott carry the sad evidence that may finally bring an end to one family's suffering. 
yesterday morning around quarter to six, a farmer came across um, what appeared to be a human skull whilst he was mustering cattle. Last week on the show, Sergeants Graham Hook and Vanessa Rolfe received news on a five-year-old case. I read in the orig original event that Stuart went missing from near the railway station at Stuart Town. Yeah. Stuart was on his way to Queensland when he stopped in this small country town. A day later, after being seen near the train tracks, he disappeared. And where the skull was found is probably around 500 metres from the railway line. The remains will be taken to the Institute of Forensic Medicine at Glebe, where they'll be subjected to further examination and um, using DNA and dental records, hopefully identified. The remains will stay here until forensics can confirm whether or not it's their missing person. That'll be confirmed tomorrow with the forensic dentist and the forensic pathologist and to ascertain, if we can ascertain, uh, what the cause of death was. Back in Sydney, after 15 long days of searching, there is still no news for Mitchell's mum, Anne. We've spoken to a few people today on the information that we had. The place down in uh, White Street, Lilyfield, I don't think he's residing there, the Grand uh, I, he, he, Apparently he was down there yelling out to someone, so he's trying to get someone's attention, oh, some okay. other kid. But he's definitely with kids from Leichhardt High. Oh, yeah, well, we just, we've just come from Pioneer Park. Unfortunately, I think we're a touch too late, but we might get a car to go. Mitchell has run away once before, but he's never been away this long. OK, great. Thank you very much. Okay. I appreciate the help. No problems. Thanks for that. It's hurting me. And it hurts the family, which then hurts me even more. He just doesn't understand or he doesn't want to understand how, how he's hurting everybody else. Back at the New South Wales Department of Forensic Medicine, Professor Chris Griffiths has received dental records for Stuart, the missing Victorian man last seen five years ago. He'll actually spit the image straight onto the computer um, screen. The process takes time. Every single tooth must be photographed and compared to Stuart's dental records. If you can see in the middle of the tooth, that dark space, that's where the nerve is. Okay. Can you look at the shape of it on there? See how the similarity between yes. the outline of the, the, the nerve canal there to the nerve canal in that one there. Then you also look at how the back of this tooth has been chipped, chipped away. Um, it's broken out as this part of this large um, large cavity that he'd gone to see the dentist and that's chipped away yep. there too, so you can see the chipping there. So, is this their missing man? It looks, you know, fairly high that this could be the individual. While the coroner will determine how Stuart died, it's a tragedy no family should ever have to deal with. It's probably not the, the best outcome for them, but at least now they've got closure. Um, the wondering ceases for them and I guess the grieving uh, starts. And just as one case closes, another begins. The high-risk case of missing schoolgirl Jessica Smith is breaking. Jessica's mum is extremely worried at this point. You know, we believe she's in the mountains with her boyfriend and his five mates, so as any mum would be, your, your daughter's up in the mountains with five males. It's a yeah, big concern. Jessica is only 13. It's no wonder this case has caught the attention of everyone at the Missing Persons Hello. Unit. Is that Carol? Yes, it is. Carol, it's Mandy Gar from the Missing Persons Unit. How are you going? Um, okay. Mandy's okay. calling Jessica's distraught mum, Caroline. And her boyfriend's name? DJ. That's all I know him as. And does she have access to money? Like, does she have her own bank account? No. At all? So she has no access to funds at all? Nope. OK, well, are you going to be home today at all? Yeah. OK, we'll just try and put our heads together, I guess, and have a think of where she may have gone. And if she's not at Katoomba, then, you know, we need to sort of think of some other places she may frequent. Yeah. OK, bye. Poor thing. I think she's concerned she's hanging with people that are doing the wrong thing. And she probably is in trouble, you know, 13 years old, up in the mountains with five guys. It's, it's not a good thing. So we're out to see Mum. She's really distressed. Oh, yeah. 
In Sydney, while police race off to find missing schoolgirl Jessica Smith, 16 days after he vanished, 14-year-old Mitchell McLean has turned up out of the blue. I actually found him in the park. Went up, put my legs between his legs and got the back of his shirt and said, come on, let's go. And he just come, no problems. The same my mum, she was driving past and I jumped in the car and then we went home. Didn't feel like staying out no more. Got boring. And we're just talking and he said he wanted to come home but he didn't know how to come home and it was just like a dilemma for him. Yeah, when, when she put up the, up the signs, it made me realise that she was worried a lot. Senior Constable Anita Masillo now needs to cite him before she can close the case. Hi, guys. Mitchell, finally meet you. How are you? It's good to see you home. So where were you, where were you hanging about? Mates' houses. Yeah? In the street with my mates. Yeah? yeah? It's not really a safe thing to do, mate. Anita uh, warns Mitchell that peer wife. pressure can I be know, a very dangerous thing. You know, when you're with your friends and that, it feels like that, you know, because there's a group of you, that it's safer, but the streets aren't a, a particularly nice place for a 14-year-old boy to be hanging around, you know? It's nice to, to come home and have your mum looking after you. Yeah? All right, Mitchell. Take care. Um, no problem. We'll, uh... See you around, hopefully, but on, on better terms. On good terms. basis. <laughs> OK, guys. Thanks Thank for that. Thank you. See you later. Bye. Hey, you did Mitchell's back. <laughs> and his mum, Anne, hopes it's for good. <laughs> I've talked him into staying at school. Like, we've had big talks and that, and... I'll just have to take one day at a time, see what happens. Meanwhile, at police headquarters in Brisbane, forensic artist John Garner is making the final adjustments to his aged photo of missing man Bill Roach. He's closer in general shape to this particular brother here, the one at the top. What I've done is to split uh, copy half of that photo and bring it onto my work page here like so. John's created a virtual mannequin using Bill's brother's features. But he's still having trouble with the hairstyle. You got something to show me? So he's asked case officer photo. Jim Ryan to come in Great. to give him a hand. What's missing now is basically the hair, but what's interesting about this is the way in which both of the siblings have got uh, a receding section down here and a little bit of grey just in that neighbourhood yeah. there. My personal thought is that the this hairstyle is probably more accurate. And there he is 13 years later. Bill Roach, aged 39. Once finished, they immediately send a copy to Mark and other police around the country. So what we've got now is what our police artists in Queensland believe Bill would look like as a 39-year-old. And I'd appeal to anyone out there that knows the whereabouts of Bill to give Crime Stoppers a call, 1800 333 It's vital that we get information to give some closure to both Bill's families. Back in Sydney, Mandy Gale and Gary Bailey are on their way to meet 13-year-old runaway Jessica Smith's mum. My concerns would be that um, She's only done this on one prior occasion, which was a week ago, and she came home. She hasn't done anything like this in the past. Um, obviously, the age of the male she's with, she's only 13. And, um, yeah, the fact she's had no contact with her mum. 13-year-old with adult males is yeah, a bit of a worry. 